Welcome to Gall Sky University Lesson 3. This is Aaron Sokol and in this lesson we'll cover creating headers in Photoshop. Again, this is how I create headers. Feel free to create headers however you like. The first thing I'm going to do is install some fonts. To install fonts on Windows XP, go to My Computer, Local Disk C, go to the Windows folder, go to the fonts folder then just drag or copy the fonts you want right into the fonts folder now they're installed on our system now open Photoshop go to file new name the file something you remember change the measurement units to inches make it 10 inches wide and 2 feet high and make that resolution high I'm gonna set it at 300 again click OK select the text tool here by clicking on this T click inside the new document whatever you type will show up wherever your cursor is flashing but first I'm going to change my font click inside this box and just start typing the name of the font you want once you've typed enough letters Photoshop will know which font you want and then you can just hit enter. We're ready to start creating text now. Type the gulls cry. Click and drag over the text to select it. Change the text size by going in this area and you can just click and drag on the text symbol to change the font size. Dragging right will increase your size and left will decrease it. You can also click on this drop down arrow and select a font size. Or you can just type a value right in the box. Hold down the control key and press T to get that transform box around your text. This is what's going to let you have precise control over where your text is aligned. Click right in this box to assign X and Y coordinates to the text. This will move the text around in real time to whatever value you put in this box. To put the X value in the center of the page, it's usually about 1500. Type in 170 for the Y value to get it near the top and then click on the move tool when you're done to apply your changes double click the area over here where it says layers this is probably the most important panel in Photoshop this shows you all the layers of images or text that you've added to your document and what order they're stacked on top of each other in whatever layer or layers are highlighted in blue will be changed when you do something in the Photoshop window Let's add some effects to our text. Right click on the layer that says the gulls cry and click blending options. This brings up the layer style box. Click on drop shadow. Click OK. Now our text has a nice drop shadow. Find this rectangle on your toolbar and click this tiny arrow in its lower right corner and it'll show you a group of shape tools you can use. Click on the line tool. Now click and drag underneath your text to draw a line underneath it. If you hold down the shift key on the keyboard while you drag, the line will stay straight. Now we have a line. If you can't see the line, that's because it's too thin. Hold Control and press T. Click on the Y box and change its value to about 317. Click on the Move tool and click Apply to place the line there. The line is too close in this case, so I'm going to press the down arrow on my keyboard a few times to move the line and give it some space. Now we've moved the line around, so let's adjust its width and thickness. Hold Control and press T to get that transform box around your line. 
Now this box with the W controls the object's width. Right click inside it. Now right clicking on any of these boxes up here gives us the option to change its measurement units. I'm going to change it to pixels. This box with the H controls the object's height. I'm going to right click and change its measurement unit to pixels as well. I'm going to change the line's width to 2820 pixels and the height to 11 pixels. Click on the move tool and click apply. Now we're going to make some copies to our line. Find the line in the layers panel It'll be called Shape 1 by default. We're going to right click on it and click Duplicate Layer. This will bring up the Duplicate Layer box. Now name this layer so you can keep track of it. I'm going to name it Middle Line and click OK. Just to keep everything straight, I'm going to name my original line. I'm going to double click on where it says Shape 1 and type Top Line. Now click anywhere outside your layers to deselect it and finalize that name change. Now make another duplicate layer of one of the lines and name it bottom line and click OK. Click on the middle line to select it. Hold Control and press T to get the transform box. Change its Y value to 389. Click the move tool and click apply. Click on the bottom line layer. Hold down the control key and press T. Change this Y value to 593. Click the move tool and click apply. Click on the text tool and click between the middle and top lines. I can see from this flashing line that my font is set way too high. So I'm going to go up here and lower it to about 12 or so, depending on which font I'm using. I'll type the month and date here and change the text to bold from this drop-down area. Since this top line is touching the text, I'm going to nudge it up by using the up arrow on the keyboard a little, just to make a little more space, and then click on the move tool to apply that. I'm going to press Z for the zoom tool and then click to zoom in over my month and date. Right click on the month and date layer and click duplicate layer. Now I'm using the arrows on my keyboard to nudge this layer over but the faster way is to hold down control press T and just change the Y value. I'm going to change it to 923 and click the move tool and apply. I just decided that I want the volume and issue number on the right instead of the date. So I'll click somewhere in the middle of this text with the type tool and replace it with the volume and issue number. Now I'll make another duplicate layer of the date layer and title it a student pub and click OK. Hold control and click T to get the transform box and change the X value to 2145. Click the move tool and apply. Now click inside this duplicate layer and type a student publication of GCCC. Now if you press control and zero on the keyboard, that will automatically zoom out so you can see everything in your work area. Select the text tool and click on the left side between the bottom and middle lines. Before I type, I'm going to change the font again to Times New Roman. I'm going to change the style to regular and the font size to 9. Here I'm going to type the college's address. If you're having trouble seeing what you are doing, select the zoom tool and just click and drag over the area you want to see better. This is called a marquee selection and this will help you to just really hone in on the area you're working on. 
click on the move tool to deselect the text tool then move the text with either the arrows on the keyboard the move tool or the transform box to get this lined up exactly where you want it if you hold control and press zero that will show you your entire work area now I'm gonna make another duplicate layer just like I did for all these and I'm gonna put this one on the other side of the header with the transform box I'm gonna replace this text with nonprofit organization text I'll zoom in so I can read what I'm typing if you're typing and you accidentally click outside of the text box you want to work on Photoshop will automatically create a new layer we don't want that so we'll have to click on the move tool click on the new layer and click on this trash can down here which will throw it away forever and make sure you're working on the text area you want it's easier to click somewhere in the middle of it like this with the text tool then use the arrows on your keyboard to get you where you want in the text so now I'll finish up this text and use the X and Y axis to line it up how I want hold control and press 0 and voila I have a nice generic header for the cover of a newspaper Oops, but I have one problem. Somehow I didn't align the text in the nonprofit area, so I'm going to select all the text and click right align up here. Move it back over where I want it. This header is finished. But don't forget to save it. Okay, so that's a header for the front page. But what about a regular page? I'll create a new file. I'll name it left page header. Change the measurement units to inches. And for this regular page header, I'm going to make it 10 inches wide by 1.767 inches tall. Again, with a resolution of 300. This is going to be similar to the front page header we just saw so I'm going to drag both documents out of their tabs so I can see them both I'll move the cursor to the edge of the cover header until I get this double sided arrow then drag it over a little to expand the view so I can see it all now I want to bring everything above the middle line in my cover header into my new regular page header. So I'll select all of the layers that I need over here and then I'm going to just drag them right into the new file. As long as all the layers are still selected, I can drag them around until I'm happy with their alignment. Now change the text to match the page you'll use it on. And I'm going to make this a news page header. To align it perfectly in the center, I'll select the layer, hold down control, and select the background layer. Then I'll click on this center alignment control. Ta-da! It's centered. Zoom in on the rest of the text and change it to fit its destination page. I'll make this page 2 and align it to the left more with the arrow keys. I'll align the month and the year to the right side of the page. I'll align this text to the center by selecting it holding by holding control, selecting the background and pressing center align then I'll select it and change it to the gull sky I'm gonna save it and now we have a header for a regular left page to make this a right page header all I'm gonna do is swap out the text of the page number and the month and date make a small adjustment to the alignment and save it and I'm done 
that's it for lesson three of Gulls Cry University. In lesson four, we're going to finally get down to the nitty gritty of creating a newspaper layout in InDesign. See you there.